Good morning. Welcome to another edition of Take 5. It is Tuesday, May 3rd, 2011. And if you've noticed my voice is a little hoarse the last couple days, it's because I've been cheering like crazy for my man John Cena. Of course, he won the title Sunday night, but he had to defend it last night on Monday Night Raw, and he was successful, so he is still the champion. Now, I've got a very serious passage to read today, all right? So, my jovial, normal, happy, excited self, I'm going to change tones because we got to pay real close attention here to what Jesus says. He gets very serious. We're in Matthew chapter 18, verse 5. Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to have a great millstone fastened around his neck and to be drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe to the world for temptations to sin, for it is necessary that temptations come, but woe to the one by whom the temptation comes. And if your hand or your foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life crippled or lame than with two hands or two feet to be thrown into the eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into the hell of fire. See that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I tell you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. Make no mistake about it. Reread this if you have to. This entire passage is referring to to how we deal with children. Children probably who are too young to read this, they haven't learned how to read yet. Little children. I believe God cares for everybody. Absolutely. We know the most famous scripture in the Bible, He loved the world so much that He gave His only Son for us all. But what Jesus is saying here, he's, remember that yesterday we talked about how you had to become like a child even to get into the kingdom, and the more you're that way, the gr you're the greatest in the kingdom if you're that way. Well, now he's actually talking about children, since he's got one right there as an example. And he said, I want you to know something. I love these children, and if you hurt these children, let me tell you something Every one of them's got an angel looking out for them. Okay? My father has put an angel on every one of these children to watch them and protect them. But they don't they can't do it completely. And if you hurt one of these children, if you cause one of these children to sin, if you do anything to hurt these children, it would be better for you if you were dead. Go reread it. Our loving, wonderful, warm, peaceful Jesus. Oh, he defends the children. He has no tolerance for those who would hurt children. He said it better for a millstone. Millstone was about the biggest stone you could find. Be put around somebody's neck and cast into the depths of the sea. And the reason he says better for that person, you keep reading. He said, look, if your hands cause you to sin, if your eyes cause you to sin, whatever causes you to sin against these little ones in particular in this passage. Now, he speaks more general in another passage. But against these little ones, against these children, they, you're going to get, if you do that, you're going to get thrown into the fire of hell. Our laws are really hard, really harsh, on those who hurt children. And I'm glad they are. You can have this argument about the death penalty all you want. And, and I'm getting away from the scripture a little bit here. Believe me, people who hurt children do not deserve to live. 
So if you're watching today and you're thinking about doing anything to a child, read this passage again. If you need to get help, get some help. Get some professional help. But it's very serious business. Parents, you know how much you love your children. God loves them even more. And if there are any children watching this broadcast, I want you to know, you've got an angel watching over you. And I used to tell my kids this at night when I lived with them. I'd, I'd, I'd kneel by their bed and I'd hold their hands. I said, you know, you know there's an angel watching you tonight. Angel's going to watch over you. Sometimes they'd get scared. They'd be afraid they'd have a bad dream. I said, you know, who's, who's watching you? They said, angel, that's right. God's giving you a special angel. It's true. I think they probably stay with us when we get older too, but there's a special place in God's heart for these children. And as you can tell, as a father of three, a special place in my heart for him too. Hey, got a little emotional today, but Jesus is absolutely passionate about that. So should we be. Not much tolerance for those who hurt children. I'm going a little long. I would say this. We're a very grace-oriented church, most of our churches. And we're gonna and I'm gonna be talking about that in, in a couple days, how we air that way. I was in a church that really aired that way and allowed a pedophile to remain a member. And he wound up molesting three of the children in the church. I'd say once they've done that, that they should never be in your church again. Opinion again, but I think I can find pretty good evidence for it right here in the Word of God. Hey, I want your thoughts on this one. Please, don't just say liked it or something like that. Give me your thoughts. Tell me if you think I'm wrong, but come at me with the Word of God. Please. Love you guys. I know I went long today. I'm very, very, very passionate about this subject. See you tomorrow on the next edition of Take 5.